your doggies now. It's okay. Yeah. Hi, doggies. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who, who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest is Hannah Kaminsky. She has written many beautiful cookbooks, also photographed them herself, as well as books for other well-known plant-based authors. And she is going to make an amazing, delicious, dairy-free, decadent, and of course, vegan recipe, a chocolate cherry truffle. Please welcome Hannah to the show. I'm so happy to see you again. Hey, it's so good to be here. Yeah, I met you at the San Francisco Veg Fest a couple years ago. Oh my gosh, feels like a lifetime ago and like in-person events and all that. You don't even look old enough to, to, I mean, you look like you're like maybe 14 or 16. How do you manage to look so young? Oh, you're so kind. I'd like to say it's the vegan diet. Um, I don't know. I'm lucky for sure. <laughs> so speaking of the vegan diet, how long have you been vegan and what brought you to it? Well, let's see. I went vegan when I was about 14. So now that I'm about to date myself, that would be about 17 years. Well, it's almost like you froze at the year you went vegan. It's true. It's true. I don't think I've grown up that much, although I'm trying to still use the same press photos and eh, it's not exactly the same back then. <laughs> I need new photos. But um, I, I was just inspired because I suddenly found myself in high school and I was exposed to a lot of different people and different diets. And I hadn't really met any vegetarians before that. So I suddenly had these vegetarian friends and I thought, oh, well, that's pretty cool. I don't really understand it, but you know, I want to be cool. So I went vegetarian. And about a month into that, I was like, well, okay, why am I vegetarian? And I actually did the research and I realized there was just so much cruelty inherent in that system too. And my, MO from day one was just, I do not want to cause harm. There is no reason. And I said, I am not buying into it. I'm going vegan. And I haven't looked back. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, I, would you say, Hannah, that your focus has been mostly on desserts? Yeah, uh, because when I first went vegan, I had a huge sweet tooth. I was not motivated for health reasons. It was all about the animals. I like to say I'm a flavor first vegan. And I couldn't find any vegan desserts out there that were decent. I mean, it's only 17 years ago, but it feels like the Stone Age now compared to all the options we have on the market and all the amazing vegan bakeries out there. So I had to learn to make it myself or go without. And I you know, it's interesting because I did a special show on Wednesday for Veterans Day, and one of the guests was saying, I was asking them all why they went vegan. He said, because my wife told me. And he said, I'll do it as long as there's dessert. And <laughs> so that's really important to people. And I know Dr. Barnard, he is told me I was on the show Cupcake Wars. I didn't win, but I didn't lose. And I didn't really want to go on it because I'm kind of known for like not using oil and things like that. And I kind of had to use things like sugar and oil, which I don't really eat. But he said, you know, it would still be a good thing because desserts really can draw people in, in a way that maybe tofu can't because everybody loves desserts and nobody sits there and eats a German chocolate cake and says, where's the egg? You know what I'm saying? Like desserts really can unify people. And it's a great way to bring people in. Even when I was a pastry chef, the restaurant, I was vegan and the desserts were vegan, but the restaurant wasn't. Nobody knew, nobody cared. People just want deliciousness. It's true. It really transcends any diet. And it's so easy to just, you know, bring something sweet, like a little treat and share it with your friends, share it with people you don't know. And not even say it's vegan. They'll just love it. And you can tell them after the work afterwards, you know, yeah. it's not so bad being vegan. It's not deprivation. Yeah. But how did you figure it out back then? Cause you're right. Let's see 17 years ago, it been 2003. That was before I even started working in the restaurant. Did, did you just naturally know how to bake before you were vegan? Oh God, no, I didn't know how to cook. I basically survived on, you know, grilled veggie hot dogs and terrible waxy cheese sandwiches. Um, I, you know, try, try, ugh, I can't speak. <laughs> Me neither. It's one of those days. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I said to try things, you know, throw it against the wall, see what works, see what didn't. Um, my parents really were very kind in humoring me and eating many horrible doorstop muffins. And I finally, you know, got better over time. I, I, I have your first book. I, I, well, tell, remind me of the title. I'm just, I'm so sorry. I, I did a summit today and I'm like, I'm not even awake. Oh God, no worries. Was I it my, my sweet, what was your first book? Because that's the one I have. My Sweet Vegan. That's right. My, and and you, you talk a lot about your grandmother in it. Yeah, I've always been really close with all of my family and it's been hard not seeing them. I mean, it's been hard just living on the West Coast and now in Texas 
but just especially with the pandemic, I haven't been able to see them in about a year now. And I do miss them. I call my mom at least every single day, sometimes twice a day. I mean, much to her chagrin, but I, I definitely care very much about them. And I love the fact that they're not vegan, but first of all, they'll eat anything I make them. No complaints, no like second guessing. And because of like my influence, I guess, they just have been gravitating towards more vegan alternatives. Like I know that my dad is now using almond milk in his cereal rather than cow's milk. Yeah, that's a good, well, it's a, it's a good start. And you know, your photography is beautiful. Did you study photography or just like the, the cooking? Did you just learn it yourself? So it began just as a passion hobby of mine because of the blog. I did document what I was making, just show and tell, you know, pose or it didn't happen. But I found that I loved this so much. It was what really grabbed me of the whole process most. And I decided that this should be my career path. And I did decide to pursue that as my degree. Because you, do, you don't just photograph your own books. You photograph a lot of other well-known vegan authors' cookbooks. Yeah, and that's my favorite part of the job. I mean, even more than making my own recipes and doing my own projects, I love the collaborative process with other authors and, you know, getting inside their mind and be able to bring their visions to life. I also work with a lot of food manufacturers and different companies, different food brands, like little products that you might see on the shelf. I'm not saying I do the packaging that you'll see there, but often like the stuff on their websites or their social media, and that's a lot of fun too. So do you have a favorite dessert? Ooh, that's tough. Um, I had to choose, it's more of a category, but it's gotta be ice cream. I just love really? ice cream. Oh, that's interesting. I just have one ice cream book on the market already, and I have a second one coming in 2021, so. So I just got- that is interesting. Yeah, because I wouldn't I wouldn't have figured that because you're such a great baker. Yeah, well, there's also a lot of great baked goods in that. So the new one that's coming, Super Vegan Scoops, May 2021, market calendar. It's really fun because I get to go more into novelties and what to do with extra ice cream if you have such a thing. So baking with melted ice cream, you can make biscuits with ice cream. I mean, just like off the wall, crazy things. I just love going into did you figure that out? I, that, that, that's because, you know, it's interesting when ice cream is melted, it's actually sweeter than when it's frozen. It is because the temperature dulls your taste buds. So when you're making an ice cream base, you, you actually need to make it sweeter or saltier or more sour than you want it to taste when it's done. What do you think every, you know, in general, what do you think people's favorite dessert is? I, I would say it has to be something with chocolate, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would have said brownies, but with the pandemic, what's trending is banana bread. So beats me. That's so funny. Well, you know, one nice thing about the pandemic is at least it's bringing some people back in the kitchen. Oh, definitely. And people are seeing food as more of a project and, you know, nurturing. And I love that the whole spirit of sourdough and fermented foods. And that's all coming back. Guess who's watching? And she says hello to us and that we both look fantastic. She's going to be on the show soon. Nava. Oh, Nava. I was just speaking with her earlier. So good, so good. That's great. Did you want to start your recipe? Or we could just, I could just chat for you. For you for I know, me too. It's great talking with you. But sure, <laughs> it'll be super simple. First of all, I, someone needs to say hi. I, I hear somebody. Yeah, this kid is being a brat down there. I don't know what his problem is. We went for a walk and he just ate. But now he's like, now we need to cuddle. Now we need to play. He's so cute. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they don't, you know, it's so funny. Like my dog will ignore me except when I'm doing, a, you know, when I'm on, on and she wants attention. It's funny that they don't, they don't like when we divide our attention, I think. No. And he's like, who are we talking to? There's no one there. I don't understand. <laughs> okay. So, so you've got a chill kid. Okay. So I'm going to wash my hands first. <laughs> Touch me dog. And as you mentioned, uh, this is based on my cherry chocolate truffles in uh, Sweet Vegan Treats. And I can actually hold that up. I've got the book right here. This is my latest release currently on the market. But I am doing a special holiday variation because cherries, I mean, it could still be holiday. It's definitely special. But I was thinking, you know, warming spices, a little bit richer flavor, darker flavors. And so I'm changing up the fruit. I have here um, currants and some dates. And so I thought the currants would be a really nice different sort of flavor, just because people don't often, you know, bake or cook with currants, which is a shame. Um, if you can't get them, you could use raisins. 
but since currants have a bit more tartness, sourness to them, I'm cutting them with some dates, which are much sweeter. And so these are just gonna go straight into your food processor. Hopefully it's not gonna to be too loud. And hopefully you can see me. It's a pretty food processor. It is, you can tell I don't use it often. I try to keep it clean. It's like, this is the, the presentation food processor. So we're just gonna pulse it to break these down. Okay. And pretty quickly, you can see it gets to a sticky lump. And to that, I'm just going to add plain cocoa powder. This is unsweetened, not Dutch process. I like Dutch process because it has a bit of a rounder, richer flavor. You can use plain natural cocoa. Um, I just feel like it's a little bit more acidic. And in something that doesn't have any added sweeteners, you really need every bit you can get. It helps a bit, like take the edge off of it. So that will go straight in. And right, warming spices, I mentioned. To make this holiday edition, I've got cinnamon and I've got nutmeg. What would also be great is ginger or allspice, clove, you could take it very simply and do just like a pumpkin spice blend or an apple pie blend. Uh, whatever you'd like, whatever you've got on the shelf. Jean is asking if you could substitute cranberries for the currants. Absolutely. I thought about doing that, but be careful when you're shopping because they're typically sweet. So if that's an issue for you, they have added sugar. You can get them without the sugar, but then I would do half and half cranberries and dates, otherwise it's going to be really sweet. Yeah, and sometimes they have oil too. It's really weird, it's dried fruit. It's, yeah, it's kind of frustrating. But also, salt. if you did cranberries, it'd be great to pair that with orange zest. Yeah, oh yeah, cranberries and orange is great. Did you know that chocolate is the number one craved food in the world, Even oh, it even beats pizza? I believe it. I mean, I would definitely go for chocolate before pizza, unless <laughs> it was chocolate pizza. That would be tough. That's funny. You know, when, when we were little, this is going to sound so weird, and I don't know why. You just you just tend to eat like your family. We would get, you know, cheese pizza. I wasn't vegan until I was 17. I didn't get as smart as you until I was older. But we used to put peanut butter on our pizza. I don't know why, but we did. No, it's all good. I mean, live and learn. You got to go through your own process, too. Yeah. It's just, but now when I think of it, I'm like, oh, that sounds disgusting. <laughs> I don't know. But I think all meat sounds disgusting now. Cheese, cheese especially. It's just like... Just looks like pus to me, you know? It is. Uh, it's like, ooh. anyway. <laughs> on to better things like chocolate. Yes, on a better note. Now we will keep processing this. preferred type of date that you use. I live in Indio and it's considered the date capital of the world. So we have a lot of different varieties here because this is oh, where yeah. they're from. Uh, that's such a luxury. I wish I had that. Uh, Medjool are like the gold standard, really lovely, luscious, rich dates. Um, yeah. Failing that, I'll do uh, the Deglet more. I feel like that they're a little bit less expensive, but they're a little bit drier. So it depends how you want to use them or eat them. I really love the medjool if you're just stuffing them as a quick appetizer. So fabulous. If you just fill them with like almond butter. I actually did date stuff with a spicy miso paste. So you got like the heat and the salt and the sweet. It's wonderful. That's neat. That'd be a great holiday appetizer too. And dates are great. Yes, I agree. Cindy's saying, what about frozen cranberries? But the idea is to use dried fruit, right? Yeah, yeah, fresh fruit or frozen fruit really just wouldn't work for this application. Any dried fruit though. Um, I was thinking I've got like dried pineapple, dried blueberry. Uh, what else could you do? Oh, yeah, chocolate and blueberry would be great. Yeah, I mean, chocolate goes with everything. So go 
go shop it out, check out the bulk bins, see what's on sale. You really can't go too far wrong. And so now we are going to make the chocolate coating. In my book, I have instructions for doing this in the microwave, but I just moved here and I refuse to buy a microwave. So I don't have one. And we're going to melt it over the stove. And that is very simple. What I've got is just a pot with a little bit of water, about an inch high, not so much that touches the bottom of this bowl. And it will boil and steam and steam the chocolate so that it melts more gently. So I'll just take a minute. And while that's going, I will portion this into top shaped bowls. So I've got a, you know, I guess this is a cookie scoop. Uh, you might call it an ice cream scoop. Ideally, it might be a little bit smaller, but I, again, just moved and I can't find where to put my smallest one. So we'll make it work. Yeah, it's that, funny. I have like seven different scoops. They come to real tiny to like to ice cream size. Yeah, I love them. I even have one that's like oval shape. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but if you want it. So I'm just doing like half full to get a nice little... Uh, what size would you call this? Uh, a walnut size? About just like one or two bites. And I'm going to put them on a baking sheet lined with a silk hat over here. Hope you can see that. And I'm just going to give this a stir every now and then. It's going to take a minute. People are suggesting their favorite dried fruit with chocolate cherries, mango, apricot. Mango would be good. A lot of times people dip dip fruit in chocolate. Oh yeah. This is like next level dip chocolate. These would be great gifts if you want to give like a sweet treat for the holidays. They heat well, so you can make them in advance too. I wouldn't say they ship well because chocolate could melt. It does worry me. I mean, if you're in a colder place, it might be safe, but I'm in Texas and today it's pushing 90. So I would not ship chocolate personally. Some people just can't have chocolate for reasons like high histamine or migraine. So do you think it might taste okay with a roasted carob powder? Oh, sure. If you're used to carob, if you expect it to be carob and you're not expecting chocolate, that's my caveat. If you know it's carob, it would be fabulous. I love carob, but it is not chocolate. Exactly. Yep. It's a, it's a fruit, actually. Do you have a preferred brand of cocoa powder? Um, actually, I do. I love Rodel. Um, I work with them periodically. They're known best for their vanilla, which is superlative. But you may not know, they also do cocoa. And they even sell it in like bulk sizes in Costco. So you can get a great deal on it. And it's on Amazon, like everything else. But I adore everything Rodel does. So have you ever used have you ever used vanilla powder? Oh yeah, I think it's fabulous, especially if you're doing candies or things that are really like liquid sensitive. You can't add water or alcohol, whatever it is. The powder is perfect. Frostings, you see the beautiful little vanilla bean specks in it. Yeah, it's I beautiful. love that. I love it. It's it's expensive, but you don't use as much, so it's. I think it really makes a difference. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I bought a little jar of it maybe five years ago and I'm still using it. That's it's incredible. <laughs> and also if you're cooking with so few ingredients, I mean, what is this? This is five ingredients I've used. Every single one counts. So don't skimp on quality. You taste Thank it. you. I know because people complain how expensive it is, but, but you're eating it. And so why wouldn't you want it to be the best, you know? And, and I hope people know never use imitation vanilla. That stuff's really bad. Oh yeah, it's just pure chemical. Yeah. It's a science experiment and it doesn't even taste good. It doesn't, it, it's, it does not taste good. And that's why I don't know why people keep using these extracts that don't taste good. If they would just try the vanilla powder, they know it's so different. Yeah, it's very frustrating to me. People make the recipes and they say, I did everything right, I followed everything you said, but they're substituting really subpar ingredients. So, you know, crap in, crap out. It's what you're putting into it is what you're getting out. And if you don't use good food, you're not gonna eat good food. Yep. Also, it's better to invest in your health, you know, proactively rather than after the fact when you need to, you know, buy medications to fix things. 
You buy healthier things in the first place. How many books do you have now? So uh, Sweepy and Treats makes number six, six, and uh, the one that can, comes out next summer will be seven. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, Luke I mean, it's, it's took it taking me sixty years to get three done. I don't know how you guys do it, all you prolific recipe creators. Do you spend most of your time working on your blog? Um, I do spend a good amount of time on it, but. You know, every day is a little bit different, and that's the, the fun of freelance life. Um, it keeps me inspired because I'm not doing the same thing every day. Because if I was just sitting in front of the computer writing in the blog, I would hate it. If I was just, you know, editing photos all day, I would hate it. If I was just cooking all day, I would hate it. Keeping it diverse and varied keeps me inspired. So that is done. I'm just going to wash my hands again. Yeah, it, it is a little bit sticky. Um, if it is too sticky to handle, you can put that, you know, center in the fridge for a little bit. But, you know, I say just go with it, wash your hands. Good advice in general, wash your hands. <laughs> what do you think is the most complicated dessert to make? I, I, I have one in my head. I'm wondering if you're going to say that. Most complicated dessert. Hmm. Gotta think on that. Um, I think anything you have to torch afterwards, you know, like a like a baked Alaska, things like that. Baked Alaska is a little bit more complicated, but I would say it's the worst. I mean, I've never I, been good with the torch. I got one once for 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 a gift, and I tried to make you know vegan creme brulees and things, but I just I can't torch things too good. Oh, well, like anything else, it's just a matter of practice. I happen to love it, and I think it's very convenient because it's just that direct heat and it's such a great element a degree of control once you know how to harness it but um i guess maybe roll cakes i did two rolled ice cream cakes for the next book and those are definitely not beginner recipes but maybe like a yule log which is a roll cake with uh, meringue mushrooms and just all the garnishes and it's so ornate it's just complicated, many layers. Do you ever do a, a fruit cake for Christmas? See, I never had the fruit cake growing up, and I don't really know what to put into it that wouldn't make it horrible. Because to me, it just sounds like a lump of heart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's just like well, you know, I have a fruit cake recipe that's coming out pretty soon. Maybe you'll try it and it'll change your mind. But I agree, most fruit cake is like a doorstop. I would love to try it because I know it's such a tradition and I am really clinging to all traditions right now. Like anything to celebrate the season, anything to bring it back, anything to remind me of home. I would love to try a piece of fruit cake. I know it must be able to be done. Okay. So now our chocolate is nice and melted. Now the key is that the bottom of the bowl will be wet from the condensation. And you want to make sure that none of that drips inside into the chocolate because that will make it seize and that will make it very sad. Makes me very sad. I'm going to pour out the salt water. So now we are going to dip. And right here, I've just got a regular fork. Um, I used to have a fork that I got at Goodwill and I bent back the two middle tines to make it easier to dip on. Again, I cannot find it, but it would be simple enough to do again. Uh, you could still just use any old fork, not a big deal. And, you know, very simply, pop one in. I like to use the spatula to help coat it. Let's see if I can show you any of this, I'm not sure. I think you could see. I'm hoping. That's, that's beautiful. So get that covered in the nice melted chocolate and pull it out with your fork. You want to let it drip off a little bit so it's not too thick. You'll tap on the edge a little bit until it's not terribly drippy. And then place it back down. So now if you wanted, you could sprinkle the top with you know, anything you wanted to make it a little bit more fancy and ornate. Of uh, course, salt would be lovely if you're okay with adding a bit of salt. 
Um, I've got crushed rose petals, would be beautiful. What else can we do? Sprinkles, if you just have the regular sprinkles out there. How about gold? I've seen chocolate that it was dusted with actual gold. Yeah, edible gold would be stunning. That is definitely a luxury item. Definitely save for the holidays, special occasions. Um, if you're uh, doing the cherry chocolate truffle, a great garnish would be like crushed coffee beans. I feel like that would go really well. Barb is saying chili powder. So Monica, who's one of the biggest fans of dessert I've ever met, this um, as big as a minute, says, what kind of bowl did you use to melt the chocolate? Oh, so I used, it's just a regular, I don't remember what it's called, but it's a, oh, drop my chocolate, a, a nested bowl set, and I had it inside of a saucepan to make a double boiler. So anything that is heat safe, you could use to do that. And Lisa says, what is the dipping chocolate made with? So this one, I think it's just um, Trader Joe's that I got this time. Uh, they have an accidentally vegan chocolate and it's semi-sweet, so there is added sugar, but they have just started selling a 100% cacao chocolate if you wanted to use that. Yeah, I noticed that, uh, that they do sell that now. It's incredible because that, that when I haven't eaten chocolate in 10 years, it's, not, it's mainly because it gives me migraines. I have to stop, but when I did, there was a brand that don't they longer make, it's Sunspire, and it's the one that all the macrobiotic chefs use because it was sweetened with barley malt instead of sugar. Yes, I remember that. It was actually quite good, and uh, but they don't have it anymore, so it just yeah, went away. I really wonder why, why would that go away? Yeah, it was so popular. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to ask Chef Eric what he's using now. And do you have... Um, what what do you think of all the new sweeteners on the market? I mean, I, as some of them I've never even tried, like Mohan and monk fruit and all these things. So I have mixed feelings about it. I am generally a fan because I think that everyone should be able to enjoy something sweet and it shouldn't be horribly, you know, disastrous to your health, especially if you're diabetic and you have to be careful with your sugar. Um, but for baking, they're not all equivalents. And especially for making ice cream, uh, sugar is a big factor of what makes it freeze without being like a big brick of ice. So you can't just substitute um, monk fruit or stevia for sugar. It doesn't have the same property and it's going to be really icy. Um, for just, you know, sweetening drinks or adding to your oatmeal, eating, cooking, everyday things like that, that are less, you know, science-based and precise. Absolutely. All for it. I've got a bottle of stevia. I use it every day. I love it. But there is a time and a place for me, for sure. Monica says she just made baked Alaska. Wow, Monica, take a picture. I'd love to see it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah people do love desserts. The recipe, recipe for uh, s'mores baked Alaska in um, real food really fast. What's a good dessert for people that are trying maybe to eat something a little bit less fat, less calories? Like, do you have any fruit ideas? Fruits. Um, be on the spot there. Well, good. This is you gotta you gotta start thinking about your repertoire. Well, meringues are a really great option because they have zero fat and you can make them with aquafaba, which is the chickpea brine. Um, you would definitely need to look up formulas, but I know that people have done it successfully with the alternative sweeteners like stevia or mustard. Just bear in mind that those also will not brown the same way that sugar will. So if you're making like stevia sweetened muffins, they'll stay very pale. You mentioned you, you're coming out with a new book based on ice cream. Do you have a preferred uh, uh, ice cream maker that you recommend? Yes, I believe, oh, I have to look at it. What is it? Let me cheat and peek down here. It's a Cuisinart. So oh, it's wow. a Cuisinart and it's one of the really fancy ones that has the built-in um, compressor. So I love it, you can just plug it in and instantly freeze. It's not one that you need to like stash in the freezer to have it solid and ready to go. It is pricey, but if you make ice cream regularly, it's worth it, especially considering the price of, you know, mainstream vegan ice cream, which is not cheap and still not my favorite. Like people ask me, what's your favorite ice cream if you're gonna buy it? And I just, I have to hedge and say, oh, I don't buy it. I don't yeah. freeze. I like to just, I have something called the champion juicer and you can take frozen bananas or other fruits and it just turns it into this yummy 
uh, very creamy. It's not really ice cream. I guess people call it nice cream, but it's really good. Yeah. And I love doing that too. It's like the perfect soft serve. And you could add cocoa to it to make it chocolate. You could add other fruits to it. You could really dress it up. Yep. Absolutely. Do you, have you met Rip Esselstyn? He lives in Austin. I have not. I didn't know that. Oh my God. Maybe, I you'll, to maybe you'll run into him at Whole Foods sometimes. Okay. Oh, I need to reach out to them. That's so cool. I'm just exploring, starting to explore safely as much as I can in the city. And I just, I love it here already. I can't wait till it's safe to really reach out and, you know, meet the community. Strange times. I was there once. I went to a place called the Optimum Health Institute. Okay. I'm, actually, I'm not familiar either. It's a healing center, and they have one in San Diego. It's uh, it's pretty nice, actually. It's vegan. There are so many great vegan places here, and lots of really healthy vegan places, too. Um, if you're ever in town, top recommendation. You would love Casa de Luz. They serve I've, heard, I've heard of that, yes. They are world-renowned. I mean, they've been here for decades. They serve one set meal every day. And it's a very balanced, you know, sort of macrobiotically based. They've got a soup and a salad, a grain and bean, a sea vegetable, some sort of fermented, some sort of pickle, um, and some sort of dressing and a veggie and something leafy. So it's it's a big plate and it's just filling and hearty and so satisfying. It does not matter what is on the menu. You will always love it. At least I always do. I've never been disappointed. I've heard, I've heard about it. I've heard such good things about it. And it's fabulous because they have a huge outdoor area. You can sit very comfortably. You can bring your dog if you want. I love it. And I also have to say, love how dog friendly this city is, like everywhere. If you can sit outside to eat, which is basically anywhere serving food these days, you can bring your dog. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah. So that's all it takes. We're all done here. We've got these lovely truffles. They just need to set up. If you wanted to speed up that process, you could stick them in the the fridge, the freezer, or just lens it room temperature and they'll solidify. You could like put them in little paper cups, dress it up, put them in boxes, just eat them. Once they're set up, do you have to keep them in the refrigerator? It depends on how hot it is in your kitchen. Like for me, I mentioned it gets up to about 90 still these days. So I would keep them in the fridge, but if you're, you know, pretty much anywhere else in the country, it's a bit cooler these days. So you could probably get away with it if your kitchen is, you know, 70 or less. Nice. Very cool. It wasn't that complicated, the recipe. Oh, God, so simple. I feel like, oh, there should be more. What do I do now? Well, you can, we can take some questions. Anybody have any questions for Hannah? You could show some of your books if you have them. Oh, sure. So we've got Sweet Bean Treats, which is the where this recipe was adapted from. Originally, the chocolate cherry truffle. See if I can find that for you. And this is very, it's one of the most diverse cookbooks I have because it runs the gamut from, you know, cakes and breakfasts and candies. You, I think there are a few frozen things I remember. So here's the original chocolate cherry truffle. Beautiful. And then I also have here the one that I published before that, which is Real Food Really Fast. And I feel like this one would definitely be your kind of your kind of speed. It's much more healthy, balanced meals. There are some desserts, but this is my only cookbook that has, you know, a focus more on savory foods. So lots of things. And the real claim to fame here is everything can be made in 10 minutes or less. That's pretty cool. I think that's the one you were you had at your booth at the San Francisco Veg Fest. Yes, I think so. It was new then. Yeah, it's nice. Fabulous, even if it's not brand new. Well, it'll, it's brand new if you don't have it. Exactly. It remains my bestseller of all six so far. You know, you 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 brought a lot of chefs on this show watching live, not only Nava, but Rachel Carr is watching and says, tell Hannah I say good luck in Austin. Oh, my goodness. It's been so long. It's so good that you're here. And thank you. It's funny how we all kind of know each other, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. And there's just such a network of support. And it means everything to me. I mean, moving out here was very, very challenging. I don't know if anyone was following my story, but I was posting on social media. I attempted to move by mailing all of my belongings here via UPS. And I would say that 80% of my plates, props, everything I own was broken. 
Mm. But um, the community came out and really rallied behind me. I was just floored by the support, the, the donations. It was incredible. And I was able to get right back up with my studio, running, working within a week. But d d d d don't they have to compensate you when they break your stuff? So it's, it's so sketchy. They theoretically will, and it's theoretically insured, but it's the, the cards are stacked against you because I submitted my claim and said, well, there's no way to prove that we're at fault. Maybe you packed it badly. Oh. So there's just no way to win. And it's very disappointing. I'm sorry. No, but it's but, good. I mean, I wanted a brand new start and I got it. But you know what? It's, I, learned, I learned from my Aunt Alice when I was 12 years old, don't cry over anything that won't cry over you because things can be replaced. That is really good advice. And it was helpful in a way to learn to let go of those things and pick yourself back up. And I'm, I've never been happier now. Yeah. I'm in a really good place. Yeah, good. Well, well, you know, I think about Dr. McDougall, who, you know, him and his wife lost absolutely everything in the fire, like everything, like everything from their whole life in the fire. And they had to start again. And it's devastating. But, you know, it, I'm sorry about that, though, of course. That's got to right. be rough. Yeah, but, you know, we, we grow. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. I, I do know that and believe that. It sucks yeah. in the moment, but. Oh, absolutely. Well, Rachel says starting over is fun. What is your favorite part of that? My favorite artifact? I think maybe your favorite part of starting over because she says it's, oh. it is. That's a great way to look at it because then you get to get all new stuff, you know? Yes, yes. It has been great. Very inspiring because now I've been able to rebuild my archives. I've got new backgrounds. I've got new plates and props. And because I am so visual, when I need to start a set, I'll go into the office and I'll look at the shelves and say, what does this food look like? What, what, what story am I telling with these pieces? And now I have all these new stories I can tell. And that's really exciting. Have you ever paired unusual combinations like let's say kale with chocolate? Oh, I definitely have. I've done really strange things. I love bizarre foods that no one would ever do. Um, I have made a roasted red pepper cake before with a spicy chocolate frosting. I'm trying to think, oh, I know I made cookies using ketchup and barbecue sauce. I just like playing in the kitchen. Yeah. Do you have any favorite spices? Cause I do, I'm wondering what yours is. I have one. Okay, well, you might have noticed I have this giant thing of cinnamon. I buy it in bulk because I eat, you know, two to three teaspoons every morning in my oatmeal. And I love it. It has a lot of health benefits. Oh, it's fabulous for you. I would just caution. I learned the hard way. If you're going to eat that much cinnamon, make sure it's actual cinnamon. Saigon Vietnamese cinnamon, not cassia, which is what cheaper cinnamon is. It's a whole different plant. And having too much of that will actually you know, cause liver toxicity. So I was eating that for a while when I was much younger and wondering why I felt so sick after breakfast. You need to get actual cinnamon. Again, investing in good ingredients is so important. Yeah. I knew this lady when I used to work at True North and she literally put cinnamon on everything. It didn't matter what she was eating, salad. <laughs> she was, it was like she was wow. a cinnamon addict. Um, she said, Rachel says, do you have a favorite source for spices? Rachel, I, since you're a chef, I'd like to tell you about local spicery. Nick's been on the show several times and his spices are organic glass jars, small batch, handmade, non-irradiated. You get two free samples with Chef AJ and uh, he has a pepperoni spice, a lot of salt-free spices. And he has this one cinnamon there that you swear it has sugar in it, but it doesn't. Really good stuff. Oh, okay, I need to go now. You sold me. Yeah, like, check, check, what I was say. check it out. And because, you know, it's really amazing. So, she, uh, so Rachel wants to know if you have a favorite source for spices. Well, I usually go to My Spice Sage. I think they're great. And they also give you free samples. They have a really diverse palette of options. And they're adding new things all the time. If you want to make suggestions, if they're missing something, they're very receptive. And I've worked from them for quite a few years. Where do you get your inspiration, either for your photography or your recipe creations? Oh, well, I follow a lot of blogs. I endlessly scroll Instagram, all the social media. I read magazines. But beyond that, it's just, you know, eating out at restaurants, it's seeing what they do. I mean, back in the day when I could, back when it wasn't all in, you know, takeaway paper plates. Um, 
just going to the supermarket, seeing how food is displayed, seeing what's fresh and seasonal, the farmer's market. I just find inspiration everywhere. It's kind of scary. I, I keep a file of ideas and I will never make all of them. There is just no way. I know. I do the same thing. I print them out and I end up eating the same thing every day. Do you ever make uh, food for your dog? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I actually did a really fun collaboration with Wild Earth and they do a vegan dog food. So I shared with them three recipes for dog food toppers. If you want to make something like if your dog was a little bit picky or they liked wet food and they only make the dry food. So I made a, a dog gravy and a dog like nori sprinkle. And it's also so good that you could enjoy it as well. So it's a lot of fun. And I definitely like making little treats whenever I can. In all of my cookbooks, there's at least one dog recipe. That's terrific. Gee, let's see, here's a question from Lisa. I'd like to hear more about ice cream since it's your favorite. Okay, well, what do you want here? I don't know where to start with that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, be more specific, Lisa. Do you ever teach classes either virtually or online? I don't yet, but it's kind of a goal of mine. I definitely want to get that started. And there was also a big reason why I chose this apartment in particular, because of course it has to have a great kitchen if I'm going to live here. But I feel like this one is so much better set up than my previous hole in the wall where I can't actually think about hosting a class or something like that. So if people are interested, I would love to get your input on what you'd like to learn and what you'd like me to talk about. I'd love to get started. Well, you know, Monica, who has a question in a moment, would like to learn dessert. She loves taking classes on pastries and dessert. And I think people like cake rolling. That sounds amazing. Like I've never tried to do that. Like, oh, you know, yeah. or make... I would love to show that. It's also very, a visual technique. Like, and that, very the... daunting to me until you do it. What's that fam famous one they make for Christmas? Is it called Noel, Bush Noel or something? Right, like... Yulog or Bush de Noel. Oh my God. Or, or have you ever made a croquen bush? I mean, that stuff's really amazing. I have not made croque and bouche. That is on like my bucket list of pastry. I mean, vegan puff pastry or the pâté chou is still very difficult. I'm still working on that one. Have you ever been to the Whole Foods in Austin? Yes, it's the flagship or the original one. The it's like one the, I think it's the biggest one in the world, but size wise. I was there yeah. once and it took like an hour literally to walk up and down every aisle. Yeah, I am so happy. I can actually call that my local Whole Foods because it's the closest one to me. Mm -hmm. And they have parking, which to me is like everything. Mm, I think so John Mackey. I'm the worst driver and I have like parking PTSD. So if there's parking, I'm there. <laughs> I think John Mackey might, might live in Austin. He'll, he's going to be on the show at some point. I don't know when. So here's a question from Monica. What's your favorite quick and easy savory food for dinner? Okay, quick and easy savory food. It's going to be a soup or a stew. I can just throw everything in the pot, whatever is in the fridge, any of the spices, any of the pantry staples, simmer it, cook it. It's delicious. Never fails. Yeah. Do you ever use the Instant Pot or the Air Fryer, two of my favorite tools? Oh, yeah. It, ironic. So funny you should ask that. The platform that I have my computer sitting on right now is my air fryer. So I love that. I figured I don't need a microwave when I've got the air fryer, which is so much better. That's funny, so, yeah. And, and, it's a, and it's a good camera stand, too. Yes, apparently. It's yeah. multifunctional. And it's also great. It, it's so multifunctional. A lot of people don't realize you can use it as a dehydrator. So Absolutely. You can to the lowest setting and keep it going like you would a long time. It dries food out. It doesn't yeah. need to like, bake them or fry them. Yep. Cheryl says, Hannah has a nice Facebook page with recipes. Do you spend most of your time on, on which social media platform do you spend most of your time on? So I would say social media. Oops. Sorry, my dog is playing with the toy and I just threw it in the wrong place. <laughs> well, we love dogs. I just see my show. dog at the same time. Um, I primarily would post to Instagram, but that automatically goes to my Facebook page. And the real like long form actual recipes are on my blog. So I always suggest my blog first thing first, bittersweetblog.com. And I've got an immense archive of recipes going back 14 years. And those are all free. That's amazing. God, 14 years you've been doing it, and, you, and yet you only look 14. You, you are yeah. not aging. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I was blogging before dinosaurs were on the earth, honestly. That's amazing. What other chefs or recipe books do you like? Who else do you like? Gosh, oof, that's hard to say. We've talked about Nava. I love Nava. I work with her regularly. Always use her recipes. Um, Michelle Shen, I absolutely love. I just got her new cookbook, The friendly vegan cookbook 
and I'm hoping to review that soon. Um, also, Laura Theodore, I love everything she does. It's so simple and easy. I got um, one of her most recent books when the pandemic started. I was thinking like, I can't review this because I can't even get groceries. I've got nothing in the fridge, but I was still able to make three, four, five right off the bat. And it was fabulous. Amazing. Uh, Rachel says, what projects are you currently working on? Oof, um, I'm not sure how much I can talk about. I don't think they'll be too upset. Um, I just started a new project with Renegade Foods and they make vegan charcuterie. So I'm developing some recipes and photos with them. And I'm very excited about that. Tomorrow's pizza day. I can't wait to make it. Um, what else have I done? I've done a bunch recently with Sambacol, which is actually a, more of a, a health syrup for immunity, but they were trying to find ways to incorporate into foods more easily. So I was making them some quick, easy treats. I did like a, a berry kettle corn for Halloween. And I did like a spiderweb cheesecake, very festive and fun. Oh gosh, I need to remember, I don't know. There's so much going on. Every day is a little bit different. Well, you're really, you're just so creative. I just admire your work so, so much and just the way you did it at such a young age. I mean, you're half my age and you've done like 10 times more than I've ever accomplished. No, no, I'm just very lucky that I started early and I had amazing parents that have been just so supportive through this whole time. It's not a linear path. It's not a normal path. Um, it didn't look like it was going to work most of the time, but my parents trusted in me and supported me when no one else did and making it work. Is your grandma still alive? Yes, both of them. I can't wait to video chat with them for Thanksgiving. That's incredible. But yet nobody went vegan because of you. That's unusual when, when you make such delicious food. No, maybe I should have stayed in the East Coast, kept feeding them. No. <laughs> my fault for leaving. Wow. Well, it's been so fun getting to know you and talk to you. You're very talented. I'm so impressed with your career. And guys, don't forget to follow her. We'll have everything in the show notes where you can get all of her recipes. This one will be posted in the show notes and definitely check out her blog. So many wonderful recipes. This has been so much fun. And I, I wish you just every success in Austin. That It sounds like a great place for you to be. Thank you so much. And I'm glad that we could still hang out together as it were. You know, I'm meaning, you know, I mean, I know the pandemic is not good. Believe me, I'm sorry it's happening, but I'm meeting so many great people. Like we might not have ever really connected this way if I was just out traveling everywhere. Of course we did meet. That's how we met. That's how I really found out about you. Uh, how long has she been vegan? She said it's 17 years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, that's one thing I got you. Beat. That's one thing I've beat yet. I'm 43 years vegan. Not a contest. Yeah, I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we all get there at our own time, and I love every effort. Every vegan meal is purpose. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, Hannah. And thank all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow. The show is later this week because we're running the GI Health Summit, which you can still register for. So it's again at 3 p.m. tomorrow. And we have two guests that are going to answer your questions, Dr. Doug Lyle and Dr. Jen Hahn. Take care.